All right. Here we have an interesting little little thing I picked up. It's been in the attic for a while. It's a triplet tube tester. It's a model 1210A. It's, it's a very common tube tester. They're easy to find on eBay. They come up all the time for $50 or so on eBay. And um, the information is online. Uh, tube setup data and the schematic, easy to find. Uh, the thing that you have to worry about are the switches. Um, these are the old, uh, oh, they're just a kind of a nickel plate contacts on them. They're, they're subject to corrosion, just like everything that's nickel plate. So um, that can be a problem. Okay, let's get it open. Um, this one, somebody's replaced the cord on it already. So possibly it has been worked on. a screwdriver. One of them did not want to come. And I'll get out my hand. Yeah. Okay. There is a way of doing this a little better. Put it this way. Okay. The box is in good shape. This stuff's at an angle. I don't, I don't know if it was done that way or whether it's been thrown, dropped, or whatever. <laughs> oh, here, here's, look at this cute tube socket. To retain the tube, they put a little uh, retainer here that catches the pin. All right, let me go run this through the tube tester and make sure it's okay. Here's our test tube. I'll make sure it's okay as well. Okay, got a TV7 sitting over there that I keep ready to go all the time. Okay, these are good. Okay, now we've got only one capacitor in here, condenser. And I might be able to pull on that wire and get it loose. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, we'll. Okay, we've got the meter set on R times 100K. I ah, get down here. Let everybody see what we're doing. Okay, we're on a 100K scale on the meter, so we can read 20 megs. See, that's just my finger. We can get it. Now, we'll get to, to the capacitor. All right. It's reading about 3 megs. Oh, we'll get that out of there. And put a nice, good quality one in there. second wire is not as easy to get to. Okay, I can get the tube out of there and I can get to that easier. Okay. Now, if I pull... Okay. Point 0.2 at 200 volts. All right. No problem. Let me find one. All right. We will keep this one looking original. Here I have a, an original, new old stock, 0.25 microfarad at 200 volts. Okay. On. Let's see. <laughs> the 
damn face worse than the other one. <laughs> All right, let me keep looking. I got more of them over here. I got another one here, but it is. Oh, there's no reason why it can't go in the bottom. Okay, before I decide on it, let's test it. Uh, this one is an old one. It's an original. 0.25 at 360. All right, let's see what it reads. Aha. See, now that's what it should do. See, we're up past 20 megs, 25. It's, it's, for all practical purposes, has no leakage at all. And that capacitor is from back in the, oh, God, 40s. You know, it's just ancient. Okay? So, that means we can keep the unit looking original. Okay, this is junk. This one, there's no name on it. No telling who made the thing. Um, but it, it's really surprising at how some of the capacitors are really good from back in the old days. They're, they're 75, 80 years old and still no leakage at all. And yet you get just a little bit different manufacturer and it, it's junk. You know, it leaks like hell. I may not be able to do this. See, I gotta have room for that tube. Oh, I can't do that. No, that tube sits right in there. I can't do that. Okay, the, the, the capacitor has to go inside there. Okay, that means I gotta have one that is smaller in diameter. All right, let me look and see what I got. Oh, oh you can see the needle just sits here in the middle. It, it just, that thing is no good at all. Now, to show you what people who are fanatics do, get the heat gun. Heating the wax up. But it's 100 and 105 out in the garage right now in the shop, so <laughs> that looks for it can take a little longer to do it this way. Stay cool. Alright, let's see if that's good enough. Okay, we've broken through. See? That gets the wax itself. Okay. The best way to do this is you, you take a toaster oven, set it for 300 um, degrees, you put it in a toaster oven on a paper towel, and let it sit there for half an hour, and it'll just heat the whole thing up to where the wax is completely soft, and you can just push the guts out of the uh, cardboard sleeve. This is very high temperature wax. It's not like um, candle wax. This stuff hardens at, at 300 degrees. Alright, now I'm going to shove that out of there. Hopefully, find something to shove with. Okay. And the condenser will not fit. We're going to have to. Okay. I took it and heated it up in the uh, toaster oven. Okay, that gets us our cardboard sleeve. All right. Now, I don't think this will fit in there. It, it's... Oh, it's so close. It is so close. It's, it's within a, like a sixteenth of an inch. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to split it. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to split it.
Okay. See now. Faster. Okay. Looks just like original. And another thing, not everybody has a collection of uh, old capacitors to use. I, I've got a box over there with the with with a thousand of them in it, different values, you know, collected over the years. But uh, not everybody has got that um, that huge uh, selection there. Okay, and we position it to where the, the split is out of sight. Okay, we've got a thousand ohm resistor down inside there. I'm going to check that while I'm at it. Um, it's one of the old dog bone type resistors. Now, that takes care of the capacitor. Now, we've got a couple of resistors here. We've got one right here and we've got another one there. Um, good. Alrighty, they're good. This is, okay, this is deplorable.
Okay, that's going to do. There's not much that can be done with these switches without literally dismantling the whole unit. You can't get to the um, to the contact. So all I can do is work the switches and hope that it's enough to clean the contacts. plug it in, I'm plug it into the fuse unit, the electronic fuse. I always make sure we don't blow it up. All right. Um, okay, we're pulling 3.9 watts. Okay, we're going to set the line volts. We use the line volts selector. The, the, the selections are not linear. You, they're <laughs> good old 1920s wiring. But we do have one there that's right in the middle where it should be. Okay. Now we switch it to test. All right. It says connected out 100, 130 volts. Filament switch to the correct voltage. Column 3 of chart 1. Okay, we have an O1A. Alright, let's see. O1A, 5 volts. Okay, so we take the filament switch, switch and we set it to 5 volts, which is right on the bottom. Okay. Okay, 5 volts. Alright. Set the toggle switch to line bolts. Rotate the line from off clockwise till the meter pointer reads on the black line. Okay, we did that. Okay. Set the load to the proper position according to chart 1, column 7. O1A, it should be 58. Alright, that's 58. Okay. And then... Rotate the tube selector from off position in a clockwise to all position mark shorts. No short is indicated in the bad sector of the scale. Continue to rotate the tube selector in the same clockwise direction until the proper position is according, reached according to chart number one, column four. All right, column four number one and we only do it once all right here's our tube there let's see that has to go into here okay it's lit up okay now we go short 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 okay we got no shorts indicated okay next we go to position one. Okay, that's where we're supposed to be according to it. Alright, next. Alright, this is not anything to us. Press the button value after the tube is thoroughly heated. Okay, it is. Alright, it says good, doubtful, bad. We don't have a doubtful on this one. It's either good or bad. You, you don't get any doubtful tubes in, in this unit. <laughs> okay, let's see. We need a um, value. Okay, we press this and it tests the tube. Toying. Okay, it pegs it out. Okay, now, does pegging it out
All right. Okay, all the rest of this has to do with different types of tubes. Okay, so it says here, doesn't give anything for value. It's, it's, but what we have is a problem here. It's pegging out. So we wonder whether our load is correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the press the button and I'm going to adjust the load. Okay. So clearly the load collector is okay. All right. So at at 58 where it's supposed to be, we're right at full scale. So it indicates the tube is virtually brand new. Okay, I don't have any dud tubes. They're either burned out or they're good. So all we can do is say, hey, it works. <laughs> all right. There is an old 19, um, um, early 30s um, tube tester. Um, the next thing to do, we're going to wipe down the, the um, let me shut this off. See if we can clean the uh, panel up a little bit. Let's see. Use some of our good old dry cleaning fluid here. What I'm using here is um, Brake Clean Brake Parts Cleaner. Okay, this is the non-flammable stuff. Uh, this is actually dry cleaning fluid. It's um, uh, oh, it, it's I'd have to look it up to see what it. It says it right in here. It says what it is. Tetrachloroethylene. Okay, and if you look that up, you see it's um, dry cleaning fluid. It is a non flammable dry cleaning fluid. It's very good with, with plastics, but you want to keep it away from polystyrene. You know, the little clear plastic boxes that you put parts in? It'll, it'll liquefy that. This, this is polystyrene here. And see if we put some of that. <clears throat> see how it's liquefying the plastic? It's just liquidating. So you don't want to get it on polystyrene. But Bakelite and, and, and um, uh, Lucite and the other plastics like that, it, it, it doesn't touch. And it liquefies all kinds of grease. It's got some wear on it where fingerprints have been and things like that where the uh, paint is worn off. Uh, this is an engraved panel. It, it's not painted, it's engraved. It, well, it seems engraved. Some parts of it seem engraved, but this doesn't seem engraved. It doesn't feel, but here, right here, it feels engraved. So technically, we could strip the whole thing to bare metal and then um, completely refill the ink and stuff on it. However, this is not particularly good for that. This is not really the kind of instrument that I collect. I don't, I don't really collect old instruments. I, if I get old instruments, I give them to another fellow that I know that, that likes old instruments. Um, radios are what I, I collect. But I do come across these instruments. Um, I, I, you know, I get pick them up for a few dollars sometimes, just a few dollars. Okay. Now you can see on the panel here 
the, the area where it's worn. The paint is worn off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black marks a lot and I'm going to see if I can even that out. make it look a little better. I'm just going to put some of that paint on there. Okay. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to take just a little squirt of dry cleaning fluid and I'm going to just blend yeah, that worked too good okay that's a little too um, I'm go a little bit more Just put some marks a lot stuff on the uh, rag. Okay, now we've got a bad spot there. See, that's darkened it up much better. Okay, looks a lot better. It's not perfect, but it looks better. It's hard to tell on the camera. It looks much better. See, it's getting the glare from the light. I can't really get it to show you how much it's blended in. Because the, uh, the glare is different than what it looks like straight on. I mean, it looks a heck of a lot better straight on. You can see, it, it's not really bad. The glare is what gets it. Um, you can see the little areas there where it's shinier than um, the original panel so it it looks a little bad there but when you look at it in person it's 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 even better than it looks on the uh, camera but that made it look a lot better okay so that took a lot of the finger uh, marks out of there um, all right that's about as good as it's going to get that the only way to do it uh, any better is going to be to strip the whole thing and this would be a big job because the tube sockets mount from the front so there's no way that you can take them loose and get the panel loose in your hand. You have to unwire all the wires off of them. Okay, now the next thing we got to do is put it back in the box. Aha. Okay, it's in there. Okay, other screws.
Okay. Then we can take, we've got a little bit of places on the uh, cabinet here that are a little bit worn. We just take our marks a lot and we can blacken those in. This one is about done for. Let me get a brand new one. Okay. This is a brand new one here. Oh yeah. That's got some got some paint in it. Okay, just just quick touch up here. If we're really gonna do a a number one job like for a customer we would uh, go ahead and take the box and, and uh, repaint it completely. looks good. Okay. Oh, that looks good. That looks real nice. Okay. It's just in places where cleaning fluid. Try to get into here. Been sitting in a barn somewhere for probably 50 years. Now it'll sit in my attic for another oh, 20 years till I croak. And then it'll be sold on eBay to somebody for 20 bucks. <laughs> if anything is left, the way it's going right now with this virus crap, it's going to be a miracle if anything's left. Of course, if, if, if Trump loses, it's game over. If Trump loses, it's the end of the United States. We're, we're finished. It'll be... Uh, it'll be... Uh, Venezuelan nightmare here. Okay, that looks good. That looks really good. Okay. Well, for you know about an hour's work, an hour and a half work, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Alright, that's it. Quick little repair of a tube tester.